41 seconds of logos. You know, if this Disney Fox merger goes through, there's a good chance it's going to result in even longer opening logo sequences with even more logos per film, and that's gonna suck. I don't know what you're thinking. Oh no, Thor's in a cage. How did this happen? Thoration. Where I met you. Someone get this skeleton an agent, because it has tremendous dramatic timing. Thor, son of Odin. Holy sh! that's Clancy Brown. Things just got about a hundred times more parallax up in this joint. Also, this is what happens when you open up your superhero cinematic universe to aliens. Sh gets wonky and cartoony in a hurry. Just ask Steppenwolf, who incidentally is also a giant on fire alien monster. I cannot die. Not until I fulfill my destiny and lay waste to your home. What a shitty destiny. For him and everyone else. He's like an intergalactic Airbnb nightmare. Then you have seen Ragnarok. The fall of Asgard. Ragnarol credits. The great prophecy. Prophecies. Also, great prophecies. All will suffer. All will burn. This entire opening scene is villain monologuing done to the extreme. Knock that tiara off your head and stash it away in Asgard's vault. Right next to the thing this guy wants needs to combine it with? Are you crazy? Hammer porn. Though I'd caution you not to search a real porn website for hammer porn, unless you like smash and improvised dildos. Why not start with that? Why waste the 25 seconds individually smashing enemies if you can do this? Did he just, like, level up or something? While Thor thoroughly beats Surtur's ass here, I'm wondering what was the point of keeping Thor prisoner? Why not just kill him? Wouldn't that probably be an important step in fulfilling the prophecy? Does Surtur know that Thor will make the right decision to put his horns on the Eternal Flame later? The Odin charged Heimdall with negligence of duty, but he disappeared before the trial. Goddamn Scourge, do you ever stop expositing? Sh you were literally telling those girls plot stuff before Thor arrived, and now you're telling him plot stuff. I'm supposed to announce your arrival. off, dude. There is no point in jogging to the city to arrive ten minutes after Thor like you've accomplished something. Also, note to Asgard, invest in intercoms and or radios, or shorter bridges. I'm sorry about that thing with the Tesseract. Between this, Euro Trip, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, Finding Forrester, and Entourage, I'm thinking Matt Damon has a shot at the Best Collection of Cameos Award that doesn't exist. Do me a favor. Lock this away in a vault so it doesn't turn into a giant monster and destroy the whole planet. The one thing that can fulfill the prophecy of Surtur changing into Mecha Godzilla is kept in the only place where it can cause harm. This is like if you buried Parallax in the Pet cemetery. Also, planet? Planet? At the end of this thing, we will see your entire civilization as a city floating through space on a jagged rock. It's a comet or an asteroid way before it's a f***ing planet. The male and female actors behind Thor here are so sh** at faking a conversation so important you would ignore the first appearance by Thor in years that I'm wondering if they won a contest to appear in this scene. You had one job. Just the one. That's true, but also Thor can fly, which can't really be this guy's fault, can it? If you were worried about Thor returning to Asgard without you knowing it, you should have picked a better Herald. I can't believe you're alive. It's why, in general, you can never take death seriously in these movies. Big dramatic death scenes turn into parody plays starring Matt Damon. And you don't have a phone. No, I don't have a, a phone, but you could have sent an electronic letter. It's called an email. While this banter is pretty funny, you've got to think Doctor Strange has ways of communicating that don't involve phones or emails. Look at this place. It's beautiful. Wow, Norway looks fake as sh**. No, I've stopped Ragnarok. I put an end to Sarta. It's already begun. She's coming. Odin, who is thousands of years old, plays the pronoun game so that Thor has to ask who the hell she is. Goddess of Death. Hello. Your sister. How does Odin have a daughter that he's kept secret all this time? And while he admitted he screwed up by not telling Thor about her and what she can do, this sounds more like the type of thing where the character of Odin didn't know about her either, until the script for this movie was written. Couldn't stop her, so I imprisoned her. Isn't that virtually the same thing? What a crazy universe we live in when someone can imprison a person with magic, but can't stop that person with the same magic. We can face it together. No, I'm on a different path now. This you must face alone. Well, sh Thanks, Dad. You created this mess by your own admission, and then you waited until you were this close to death to even tell us about it? God damn, Space Catwoman is hot. Yeah. Okay, so if Hela's power is drawn from Asgard, how is she able to do this on Earth? Odin told us her powers would be limitless on Asgard, so how is this not already limitless? It's not possible. Why did Hemsworth decide to channel Shatter for this scene? I have it on good authority that this script started out as Maleficent too, and this is the only thing that survived from the first draft. Two mythical beings will now resort to punching each other while flying through a wormhole. That's what Einstein would have wanted. Movie casually kills a couple of Thor's buddies. And it should be a lot more meaningful to us because of what they mean to Thor, but it simply isn't. Thor crash lands on a planet full of trash, and tell me this isn't the same place where the Transformers found themselves in THE Transformers the movie. We're about to hear Dare to be Stupid during a fight scene, aren't we? The Purge Ragnarok. Somehow, all this misses Thor. Many apologies, Your Majesty. It's kind of crazy how little this movie has to do with Ragnarok. 
It's like a side quest that you play in a Thor RPG if you had the time. When we last saw Hela, she was at the Bifrost Gate and had killed two people. Now she's deep into the city, surrounded by a giant army of Asgardians. What exactly transpired where she walked from one end of the city to the other and drew this kind of an audience without the army trying to attack her immediately? I thought you'd be happy to see me. Maybe give them, I don't know, any kind of proof that you're actually Odin's offspring, and maybe they'll come around. You just said some shit, and now you seem shocked no one believed you. What is even the point here? She defeated and banished Thor and Loki with 10% of the effort she's putting forth here, dispatching the generic Asgardian army. Can't she just do something that doesn't make this movie over two hours long? The answer is Sakaar. It's awfully nice for this planet to have the infrastructure to put prisoners through a virtual Epcot Center ride that gives them all the details they need to know about the planet they're on. It is the collection point for all lost and unloved things. Not true, because I see neither my college Temple of the Dog CD nor my college self, one of which was lost and one of which was unloved. So the rumors are true. Every Every 20 years or so, Jeff Goldblum emerges from his hibernation to feed, mate, appear in movies, and become a big deal for three to four years before going back into the ground. In 20 more years, he'll be in the Avengers Infinity Star Wars and be the priest at the Han Solo Peter Quill wedding. You don't need to be afraid unless you're made of scissors. <laughs> Just a little rock, paper, scissors joke for you. In space? Way out in space? They still do rock, paper, scissors? How'd you end up in here? Oh, well, I tried to start a revolution but didn't print enough pamphlets, so hardly anyone turned up. <laughs> Has no one been taught our history? You've been banished for decades, but you finally come home and expect the society that banished you to have taught your story to impressionable kids. Scourge somehow avoids getting his head smashed in by all that ceiling that just crashed down. With the eternal flame... You are reborn! That's exactly what this person who has so much power, she can take out an entire army by herself needs. An army. Also, this eternal flame has a ton of uses, doesn't it? It's how Surtur will become a huge colossus when he puts his horns in it. And it can raise an army of the undead. It's one of those weird elements in movies that do whatever you need it to do at a moment's notice. It's so useful, it makes you wonder why it hasn't been used until now. Oh, a green glowing army of the dead and Kate Blanchett. What Lord of the Rings similarity will this movie think of next? <laughs> Movie soundtrack briefly thinks it's running underneath the Blade Runner sequel. The Grandmaster created this place to be whatever he wanted it to be, so why did he create a world where this shitty, glitchy hologram exists? Chris Hemsworth is way, way better looking than me. Oh, yes! <laughs> this movie's pretty funny, isn't it? I have to get off this planet. Okay, haha. -ha. We all remember what Hulk did to Loki in the Avengers, but he's been here for weeks, and he's in good standing with the Grand Master. So how the f does he not know the Hulk is here after weeks of being on this planet? He would have at least been given a description of this guy, right? Oh, Banner, I, I, I never thought I would say this, but I, I'm happy to see you. You definitely know better than to address Hulk as Banner, or to think one can influence the other. All right, this is what we've been waiting for, Hulk versus Thor. We haven't seen this ever, except in the first Avengers, on the airship and Thor had his hammer. Hulk should probably make quick work of Thor under those circumstances, since it was essentially a draw the first time. But probably not. Over three minutes of marginally thrilling, no-stakes gladiator fighting between two Avengers. Basically, space civil war on a smaller scale. Civil war sliders, if you will. I'm sorry, is this hammer supposed to have the power of Thor's real hammer? Hulk just threw Thor like a tennis ball a second ago. And now, with a random huge hammer, Thor's able to bat Hulk around like Bryce Harper in a Little League game? Well, they finally did it. They turned Thor into Raiden. <laughs> Wouldn't the ability to shock Thor be impossible at this point since he's got the power of f***ing lightning at his fingertips? Tell me about yourself, Scourge. You see, we need to fill some time while Thor and the others try to get off Sekar. I don't have much of a character other than I'm evil and want to rule the universe, so you need to fill in the gaps. Ah, the gunslinger! We'll be safe here. Welcome to Zion. How'd you arrive here? Quinjet. That still doesn't answer the question. Yeah, the Quinjet can be used to fly in space, but of all the places in the universe Hulk could have flown that Quinjet, the fact that he just happens to be on this planet is 2009 J.J. Abrams' Star Trek Spock Cave level of improbability. Where is the Quinjet now? Showing where the Quinjet is will require a naked Hulk to simply point out the window rather than just telling Thor where to look. This Heimdall vision is super convenient. Did we even know this was possible? That Heimdall could bring someone to Asgard via vision? This doesn't work. You're being a really bad friend! The Avengers Civil Four. Didn't see that, did you? How did Thor know how this remote worked so that it would release him from the shocker thing? The button he's pressing here is no different from what Valkyrie pressed to shock him earlier. And considering how this movie works, I'm surprised he didn't shock himself for a big laugh. Point break. Welcome, point break. Good thing this ship is still totally functional after being here on this junk planet for nearly two years. Nice work, big guy. We don't know where Ultron's headed, but you're going very high very fast. This is not what she said in Age of Ultron. In that movie, she said the job was finished, and absolutely nothing about the whereabouts of Ultron. It's almost like this movie needed an easy reference for which movie this was from, so they invented an alternate recording just for this scene. Why does this old message from Black Widow cause his transformation back to Banner now, but didn't do so when she originally sent it? I've been a Hulk for two years? Yeah, about that. How does Banner's demeanor stay sufficiently angry, even during sleep, to stay Hulk for two f***ing years? 
If you were to give me 12 hours, I could bring them both back to you alive. I could do it in two. What is this? Name that tune? Just both go and try and do it. Jesus, is there any reason only one of them would get sent after Thor and Hulk? I just don't get Loki at all. He has all these illusions at his fingertips, but instead of using that, he's like a guy from Death Wish trying to rob Charles Bronson. I'm terribly sorry. It must be a very painful memory. Loki taps into the mind of Valkyrie to see the trailer for Valkyrie, not to be confused with the Tom Cruise tries to kill Hitler movie. This is just gorgeous. Everything about this scene is rad. The sun's going down. Oh, yeah. really oh, yeah. The sun's getting Would low. Would you stop saying that? Thing I said out loud somehow comes out of character's mouth at the same time. Well, isn't that the most convenient appearance ever? Not only does Valkyrie find a way to go to the exact place she needed to be at this moment, but the beast that was about to hit Thor also had a controlling device on his neck. Is that a dragon fight? More importantly, are those grapes? <laughs> it's kind of amazing that the Grand Master allowed Valkyrie to continue to have control over all these prisoners after she sold them to him. Why doesn't he have his own controlling devices on them once the sale is complete? We are not doing get help. Characters do the thing that they said they wouldn't do immediately after saying they wouldn't do it cliche. Alright, you can figure this out. It's just another spaceship. Well, that was easy. That's right, you can stand on top of a spaceship that explodes, not get hurt at all, and by some sort of magic, you can get thrown to another ship and grab it by the seams as it hurtles through the air. How are all these ships missing? Valkyrie Mario jumps her way across the bad guy ships to do some miracles, and it's super fun! Choose one of your PhDs! None of them are for flying alien spaceships! Okay, movie, you can't have it both ways. You can't wring comedy from Banner shouting about how hard it should be for him to fly an alien spaceship, then have him fly it perfectly for the rest of the movie. Um, no. Even the special effects think this is bullshit. Guys, we're coming up on the devil's anus! Man, this movie has more utterances of the word anus than most anal porn or even most proctology lectures. Well, executioner? Does she have any reason to have kept him around? She hasn't relied on him for local knowledge. He's not any stronger than the next Asgardian. She can execute people herself quite easily. This character is here so that he can have a change of heart at the end, but I can't think of a single purpose he serves for Hela, other than to stand and watch her listen while she does and says expositional things that we, the audience, need to learn. Here, up in the mountains, heat signatures, people clustered together. How is it so easy for this ship to find the people, and thereby the Bifrost sword, but the f***ing god of death who flings daggers with her brain and crushes magic hammers wasn't able to find it until she threatened to start beheading fools and someone told her where it was? Wow, she really did the eyeball math on those doors perfectly. I'm not sure I understand Thor's battle plan here. The last time he ran into Hela, she f started his hammer into oblivion. He doesn't realize yet that he can control his power without the hammer, so what's the plan? Yeah, no one wanted to see what happened next or anything. How in the f did a slashing metallic weapon cause that wound, but no signs of damage outside the eye? This stupid dog won't die! The wolf is immune to bullets because we need a reason for Banner, who has been useless as a character here, to turn back into the Hulk. You wanted to know who I am? You'll see! <laughs> This is just plain awesome, even though Edward Norton did this in The Incredible Hulk and it wasn't played for laughs. I don't think I quite understand how Bruce dying makes the Hulk emerge, but I think it's consistent with what these movies are saying is possible, so I'm removing a sin for this. Yeah, no one wanted to see what happened next anyway. I'm the goddess of death. Luckily, this triggers Thor's Dumbledore dream, so Odin can give him a message from beyond the grave, or ether, or wherever Odin went. That hammer was to help you control your power, to focus it. Snap your source of strength. Thanks, Dad! You could have told me about my power way before this literal ex in a dream sequence, but I realize these revelations need to arrive in the stupidest way possible. Asgard is not a place. Never was. Like Idaho? So begins one of the longest walks ever, so that the heroes can figure out how to fight Hela, the truth about Ragnarok, and the very meaning of life before she arrives. The longer Hela's on Asgard, the more powerful she grows. Hela has shown nothing but complete and utterly infinite power since she first showed up in this movie. There isn't a gauge for how much more power she can attain. She's shown zero weaknesses, and there isn't anything in her arsenal that could be more effective. This was never about stopping Ragnarok. This was about causing Ragnarok. Well, it's a good thing you didn't take Cinemason's advice and take Surtur's crown light years away from this place. But it's not like you knew that then. Yes, Loki's going to steal this, because Loki's got a Loki. My question is, if he had free reign on Asgard for as long as he did, why hasn't he already stolen this thing and used it? Yeah, good for you for finally doing the right thing after all those times you did the wrong and horrible thing. All is forgiven. Carl Urban Commando. Do you really think it's a good idea to bring me back to Earth? No, especially since you assholes already agreed it would be in Loki's best interest to stay on Sakaar. And you know Doctor Strange is going to f*** Loki up once he arrives. Do you guys forget everything in order to service the future plot? Because space is apparently a one-lane highway, Thor's Ark runs into Thanos' ship on the way to Earth. To Infinity War and beyond, yo! You can't have a revolution without somebody to overthrow, so, uh, you're welcome. And, uh, 
It's a tie. Aren't you glad you waited through 10 minutes of credits to see that? Holy crap, so many revelations for the future of Marvel there. Man, I am glad I prevented the ushers from cleaning this movie for that. Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins, and now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. But the animal is inside out. And it exploded. Without my hammer, I can't. The ring is Bobkiss! I found it in a Cracker Jack box! The Schwartz is in you, Lone Star! It's in you! I cannot die. Not until I fulfill my destiny and lay waste to your home. Whoa, is my hair out? Meow. Yeah.